Right, this is a two-parter. If you haven't seen the first part, which is on the genetics of polling, go and watch that first, unless you already understand that, in which case, watch on. Like we said in that last technical, cattle can be horned or they can be polled, and that is determined genetically. But just to complicate the issue, cattle can also develop horn-like structures called skurs. These are just smaller, stubbier versions of the horns, they're horn tissue. These are much less of an issue than horns, really only become an issue if they get knocked off and bleed, otherwise it's a cosmetic thing. When it tends to raise eyebrows is when bulls are sold as being polled and therefore should have polled offspring, and then either him or his offspring end up developing these skurs. Now just like polling, skurs are determined genetically it's a little bit more complicated than the straight polling versus horned, but if you guys are watching this video, I know you must be interested. Bear with me, we'll get there. Again, just like the polling gene, there's really one gene that determines whether an animal is going to get scurs or not. We'll call that the scurring gene. And just like the polling gene, a calf gets one copy from its dad, one copy from its mum. For the purposes of this, we're going to call that gene SC. We're going to call the dominant form capital SC, and we're going to call the recessive form lowercase SC. Now, a calf could inherit this in any combination. It could have two copies of the capital SC, it could have two copies of the lowercase SC, and it could have one of each. What happens next depends on two things. Number one, it's the polled status of the calf, and number two, it's the sex of the calf. Let's start with the polling gene. You will only get scurs in animals that are heterozygous polled. So if an animal is homozygous polled, it's going to be polled, no issue. If they're homozygous horned, they're gonna have horns. Those are gonna override the scurs. We'll forget about scurs in them. We're left with these calves which are heterozygous polled. Remember from that last video, that means they have one of each of those P genes, capital P, and a lowercase p. And this is where the calf sex comes into play. Let's start with a bull calf. These heterozygous polled bull calves, if they have two or even just one copy of the dominant capital SC form for the scurring gene, those animals are going to develop scurs. However, for the heterozygous polled heifer calf, she has to inherit two copies of the dominant, although it's not so dominant here, capital SC variant of that scurring gene. If she has one or none, she ends up being polled. Because remember, that lowercase polled variant is the dominant form of that gene. So the chances of a calf being scurred are dependent on A, the scurring genes of both parents, B, the polling genes of both parents, and C, that calf sex. Now that is probably clear as mud, so I have put some links to some written articles you can reread in the video description. They've got some good diagrams on there as well. And just to add to the confusion, with polling, we can have variants of variants. So it turns out with the poll gene, there's not just one variant that causes polling. There's a, a Frisian variant and the Celtic variant. And although they both cause polling, they seem to have different abilities to suppress scurring. And sometimes we can see scurring in breeds like the Angus, which has an entirely homozygous polled population, or at least should have. So what on earth are scurs doing popping up in a breed like that? Is it a different gene? Has there been some behind the barn breeding? by which I mean there's been some crossing in of other breeds to the Angus population, who knows? And before we finish, I think it's worth zooming out and really asking ourselves, is scurrying an issue? Like I said, these are just knobbly bits of horn. Now I think fully fledged horns can be an issue in quite a lot of commercial settings. In fact, I even wrote an article about this on Substack. Feel free to go and take a look at that. The link to that is also in the video description. But scurs are really struggle. I think, yes, okay, they're cosmetically not as tidy. And yes, they might occasionally be knocked off and bleed, but that's really going to be an inconvenience not anything very serious. A scurred animal is unlikely to be able to do you any extra harm than a horned animal would, and I don't think they're gonna use them very effectively in any dominance behaviors between different cattle. Okay, all things being equal, if you're being asked to choose between two animals that are of equal merit, but one is scurred and one isn't, you would probably pick the non-scurred one. And I understand that for bull breeders, the question of what your buyers want to see has to drive some of your decisions. But with all the other traits of interest, that bull breeders are having to toss up and select on, should scurring be a priority? I'd struggle to make that case. Now that's it for this one, hopefully nice and short and sharp. I hope that's made it clearer for you, not less clear. If you did enjoy that, click the subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it, leave me a comment and give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you for the next one.